This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, March 10th, 2019. And Miss Vegas is going to give us the watch list for Sunday's special edition. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. And here is the list for today. We're going to talk about BAX, AQMS, BPTH, GLBS, CLF, and last but not least, AQB. So I'm going to talk to you guys first about Baxter, B-A-X. And I'm bringing this one up because Miss Sugarsweet had requested that we talk about this stock. So Miss Sugarsweet, this one's for you. Um, and this stock, you know, Baxter is a pharmaceutical company. And uh, they actually had some news a couple days ago. And the news was that they have the an approval from the U.S. Drug Administration, the FDA approval, for the launch and ready to use what they call epifibatide, which is a uh, product that is a premixed drug. And uh, what this drug does is it helps um, uh, prevent the platelets in uh, the blood cells from sticking together and clogging. And uh, this is really a treatment that is used for people with, you know, coronary syndrome, p prevents people tough from having a heart attack, and also to help with emergency conditions and where the blood supply to the heart suddenly stops. And then obviously, uh, this could be, you know, people that have a heart attack, they would get uh, this kind of medication. So this is quite impressive that this did get approved. So this is good news. Um, and I'd like to turn it over to Jim to talk to us about this chart for Miss Sugar Sweet. All right. Well, this is the year's chart that I'm looking at right now. B-A-X Baxter. Sounds like a name to me of a dog that I used to know. Well, she pulled back right here on the yearly chart to the 20 SMA, which I see right here identified as 74.13. Kind of pulled back from what we would call almost a, well, it didn't make the yearly high. But I'm going to draw a little trend line right here at 76.52 because I identify this bump right up here. And then you got another resistance all up in this channel up here. So this is a yearly chart. Seems like it's had a good run all the way down here from 61 all the way up to 76.20. And she's pulled back in the last five days. So let's look at the 20-day um, chart right now. Kind of have what, what I would call a hill coming down a little bit. Runs into that 20 on the 20-day, um, four-hour chart, or one-hour chart, excuse me. And we kind of went up right into the close here to right about, closed at right about 74.13. So I'm kind of looking at it, and I say this has been a pretty good little run for a 20-day, all the way from 70 to 76.20. And she probably run up on that good news. The news came out on the 6th, so I guess it might have been buy on the uh, buy on the rumor and sell on the news a little bit. But she did pull back to a support here at 73.54 Friday. And let's look at the daily, see if we can get anything at it. Three minute, and I'm going to draw a couple more trend lines in here in case it wants to pull back a little bit. But I'm kind of bullish on this stock just because of the news itself. And it gets an average volume and then had a huge volume surge at the end of close um, Friday, which was pretty good, run into that 200 SMA. So the 50 is starting to curl up, which gives me a little bit of bullish sediment. If it pulls back, it will probably pull back to this 20 SMA right here at 73.93. There's a little double top right there. It used to be a high at 73.96, which is rounded up to 74. Looks pretty good to me because if you move it up a little bit more, it is 74. And so let's see if we can get a little bit of pullback on this to the um, to Friday's little high right here, right around 74, a little under 74. Bounce up and try to break this high at 74.15. And if we do that, we're going to go up to 74.46 and then try to break that 74.50, which I'm going to draw a trend line in there right now. And I'm going to look at the 20 day just one more time. Oh, yeah, we got room to run on this thing. It could run up to probably 74.87 once it, because it did kind of have its good pullback correction right there. So let's see if we can break that opening high. If it doesn't, it'll pull back to that 20 SMA 
and bounce on up and try to create this resistance up here at 76.20. That's why we got a break. And this is BAX. Okay. Next one. next one, AQMS. This is with uh, Aqua Metals. And, uh, you know, this company is actually very involved in rechargeable batteries. They are lead based. And, uh, you know, that is um, all kinds of uh, battery products. So, for example, cars and trucks, hybrid and electric vehicles have this. Um, and, you know, lead batteries provide backup power for people that, you know, hospitals, your household. And it is a primary mode of energy storage for building and data centers and telecommunications company. So um, this company here, this particular stock um, on AQMS, when I was having a look at that one, I actually liked it on Aqua Metals because I really liked the weekly chart. Uh, what I liked about it is that the uh, Bollinger Bands were actually quite wide, and I liked that the stock was kind of overbought, and it definitely had an inside day. So I'm going to turn this over to Jim to tell me more about this Aqua Metals because I'm kind of liking it really more from a swing trade perspective. Uh, could could work out probably for a day trade, but I really like it from a swing trade because I really like the weekly chart. Yes, it's definitely got some momentum behind it. Plus, it has a nice little volume surge that it's had here in the past oh, couple weeks. You see what I mean by volume surge compared to what it's been like here for three quarters of the year. And every time it has that little surge, it likes to have a good pop. We have seen a good pop on it. It did was down here at 147 with a low support of right around 155 to 160. That little channel right there. So we had a high on it about oh come Wednesday to 429. Right now she's pulled back that close to 355. I see a couple supports on it. I see one right here at 334. I would not like to see it go any lower than that 334. So I'm going to turn that into a red line. That's going to guarantee me that little support area right there. And we've also had us a nice little trend up here. And I'm going to draw that in using this chart right here. Draw that little channel right here to there. Right about in, oh, I'd say probably right about here. Right about there would be good. So I'm going to magnify this up now to a 20 day. I we'll see see how the trend come up and then she kind of pulled back. So we've got a two little support areas on this stock right now. I'm seeing this 311 for a low, 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 low support. Then we've got this 334, which I called out a little bit ago for your first support if this don't hold right in here at this 345 to 355 i do believe that it can pull back one more day and it's 311 would be the low low support on it and i do like that and i do love this chart it's been it's a very bullish chart it does have these little breakouts and consolidates has these little breakouts and consolidates and i think we've done that right here and i'm going to clear this drawing set up for a second i'm going to show you something else that i just now noticed and that's just trend line from right here to here. So let's put this right about in here. Draw that up there and bring this up to about here. So now what I'm seeing, if this support does hold here at the 347, which I do believe it can because it's had a pretty healthy pullback, these are going to be your next resistances. One's going to be right here right around the 350 area which we did close at 355 so we're going to make that a support let me draw that in real fast Just, I'd say right around 350 then your next one's going to be coming up here right around the, the 362 area we've got a couple of nice little places up here and I see all these starting to bunch up right in here the 50 looks like it wants to cross the 20 but if that 20 rises above that 50 and keeps moving up, we're going to go ahead and hit these other highs. And that 420 is the high we need to break, to break resistance, the final resistance. And then that 401. And 
right here at the 385 okay so I'm gonna erase this here showed you that little trend line that I liked so I'm gonna remove that drawing now then I'm gonna pull one little low support right here at 331 and 310 311 so these are the trend lines that I'm looking at you got a pivot point right here right around 362 with your first three supports below it you got 362 350 331 and 310 for your low support the resistances from the pivot point at 362 could be 385 401 and then we got to break that top at 422 and if we do that we're going to go up to new highs and let me put just give you that new high we'll pull it up here at the 90 day it's a 90 day high see what I'm saying we'd have to go back to a year and that would be a double top at 422 we did have a high of 429 three days ago. So let's see if we can get a little pullback on this to the to that low support. If not, we'll hang out around the pivot point and bounce up to the other three resistances. And this is AQMS, and I do like the news, and that is a catalyst for this stock. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Yep. So next one I want to talk about is, you know, the, the one we mentioned a couple days ago was Biopath Holdings. And, uh, you know, that one had quite the run. And, uh, I, you know, I hope no one got stuck chasing the stock. Boy, that does happen. You know, when people chase the stock, they feel they're missing out. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if there's – I mean, I don't know anybody personally that's got caught up in the hype. But I hope no one did uh, chasing the stock because it has pulled back. However, uh, aside that it's pulled back, kind of looks still bullish to me. So – uh, Jim, I'd like you to talk about that because the weekly still looks good. Well, this was a this was one heck of a run. We called it, it out. Sure was. <laughs> I mean, I called it out it beautifully Friday. I said this is a great run, or not Friday? What was that day? Uh, yeah, I think it was last Wednesday. Friday. Yeah, it was Friday, Wednesday. You talked about it yesterday too. Yeah. So let's. Uh, this is the year's chart. And it has had some pretty good highs on it. It's been up here. I mean, it had a high before right around 50, 58. The early high was right around here, right around 58, 63, somewhere in there. And then it had another high right here around 45. And you can see back in this time back here, and it's just gradually lightly gone down in here. We've had a huge sell-off. This is a very low float stock, too, under $1 million. If I remember right, under 700000 or pretty close to it. So that was the big catalyst, I think, for the run on this trade. And you see one or two of these, maybe a couple of them a year, or at least I do. And just wish I would have took the ride all the way up because I was calling it bullish every time I saw it run. And let's pull up the 20-day chart and have a look at it. We can draw a few more trend lines here. So we did consolidate right around this area, right around 42.21 after the huge run. I did play the, one of the, uh, the halts on it. I thought I was going to get stuck on it, but it actually turned around and bounced back up and saved me. I was down like $400 on this trade at one time, and then it bounced up, and I made 120 on it just on one of the, I think it was probably the second halt, and I got stuck in a halt on it. So it, it did pull back on me and then turn around and retraced. But I called this stock at back last Friday, right around here, right around the five buck area, and it ran up a little bit and then kind of consolidated and pulled back, not really big, for two days. And then Wednesday it had another boost and started to run. And then we had that big run um, for Thursday where it ran all the way up to that $73.52 area. And then she's pulled back ever since. And we've kind of consolidated here in a way. I don't trust it yet. I don't think it's it's done its full consolidation period. So there's going to be some revenge trading done with this stock. I'm pretty sure of it. But I do believe it is overextended also. So let's go to the um, let's go to the five day. This is what I'm talking about. You don't can't see too much. I'm gonna change this to the 15 minute. That looks a little bit better. So we we've had. What you would, I would call this a descending flag pattern right now, and it's coming to a squeeze. 
right here about the end of the day, Friday after hours. She didn't do much. She didn't dip. She didn't. She just kind of consolidated. So I think basically what I want to see when I come in here Monday is I want to see this stock not go below 20 bucks. We did have a low of 2098. I do have a support down here right around 2013. I'd hate to see it go any lower than that. Then it might start descending a little bit more. If not, I would almost call this a dead cat bounce, where I think you could probably get you about five or six bucks out of the trade. Maybe up to here right around the 25 area. That would be a nice little resistance area. So it could be a nice little scout play. If it pulls back any come Monday morning when the bell rings, I'd be looking at it, give it about 15 minutes, and then we'll decide if which way it wants to go. I don't would not jump right into it come Monday morning. I'd give it 15 minutes, and if it started curling up net before that 15 minutes, I'd go ahead and get inside of it and scalp it. But I do believe it can run back up to 25 pretty easy. This is going to be BPT. You're not going to see 75 or 80 or 100 bucks on it, but you are going to see a get dead cat bounce. And that's going to be BPTH, and there's people that are too afraid to trade it, and then you got people that will scalp it. And the next one we're going to be doing is GLBS. Yes, so GLBS is the Globus Maritime shipping stock. Noticing that the shipping stocks were kind of, you know, kind of moving uh, yes, uh, Friday. So quite well, interesting because GLBS was on the move. And uh, I heard GLBS. I heard dries. So I'm like, what's happening with the shippers? You know, we didn't Even really have such a good shipping. A mm -hmm. We didn't have such a good shipping season uh, last year. So I was like, what's happening on this one? So very big volume surge on GLBS opened at 334, went as high as 534, had a nice move after hours. I think the shorts are in trouble uh, come Monday, and we could see a squeeze coming as well. So, Jim, let's hear what you got to say on GLBS. I'd like to put this shout out to Young Bull 27 Stock Twits follower. He was asking, and I said, we'll comment on our video. Yep. So, Mr. Youngbull27, this one's for you. Okay, GLBS, like Miss Vegas said, all the shipper stocks were in play Friday. So, if anybody, and that's one thing about these stocks here, this, this sector, is when one runs, a few others will run right after it in a sympathy play. I even think ship round, and, let me, and we'll look at that, I'll look at that here in a little bit, but that's SHIP. But there's all there's dries, there's DCIX, there's tops, and it just seemed like they all just run up a little bit. And this one here run up real good, and and it and I've seen it run up before too. And I'm going to show you through history what it does. This is the yearly chart on it. You see how we've had a yearly high up here. We almost we did touch it had a double top up here at one time right around 1166 one thing about this stock when it runs up it'll run right back down and correct itself it ran up here we ran up and hit a high of 10 bucks that one day come up to run up to almost about 1050 but I'm going to put me a little resistance line right here because I do it at the base of the candle where the mustard is some say the strength then I'm going to keep drawing a couple trend lines on down but this is what I think will happen. I think this stock will pull back. So I want to try to find a, a good support system. And I found one. First, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the 20-day. And I'll show you what I found. But this is the 20-day. It started breaking out Thursday a little bit. You can see all the buys coming in. So somebody knew something was up. And then it took off Friday. And ran all the way from this opening area right around 324 and ran up to 715 and then started had, well, we have what you call here is an ascending, it looks like ascending pennant flag, which it really is an ascending flag right here at seven bucks resistance. So this could break out a little bit more, but I personally think it's going to pull back. I would really do just a little bit. And let me look at the daily one minute. You see these two double tops right in here? And I'm going to draw them in with a jelly here. Put a little bitty blue circle around there on that, right around that. 
So I think this stock has two support levels. First one here at 595, and then the second one here right at 525, somewhere in that area. So if it does pull, and we could break this double, triple top that we have going on right here at 715. We did close. Oh, she dropped down after hours. Or so. Oh, I've seen what she done. She closed at 444 and ran up after hours. So that's, that's kind of a mystery to me. She still might have the mustard here. This is kind of a pennant flag with a triple top breakout. So I would actually believe that this stock could break out Monday morning. If not, it's going to pull back to these two supports right here, right under six bucks, or right here, right around 525, and you'll have you a bounce from that 525 back up. So, yeah, this is in position to have another breakout come Monday. You have that triple top pennant uh, ascending triangle. And what I mean by ascending, and I'll draw this trend line right here. Kind of just comes up and it moves on up. And really, it's kind of a hard one to judge, but it, that that's definitely an ascending because it, it has lower highs, and then the highs just stay the same. So you see what I'm talking about right here. We've had that triple top. So we need to break that triple top breakout. If it doesn't do it, it's going to pull back to that low support of 525 or a little under 6. And this is GLBS. Let's see if the shippers can keep bull going bullish on them, being Monday, Friday was the first breakout day. And the next one we're going to talk about is Cliff, another kind of semi-shipping stock. Yeah, so this one is with uh, my friend Jake from Transpider, our friend. And uh, he was uh, telling us about uh, having a look at this chart here. And it could show his chart there from uh, Transpider. And uh, this is for um, Cleveland Cliffs. You know, this company, my gosh, they've been in business a long time. Longer than many of us, how even our ancestors. This company's been around 170 years. So they've been around for a long time. And they're a major supplier to the production of iron and steel. And um, they are leading iron company and operator uh very cool website uh looks like you know i wonder if they ever have granite in there i'm looking at these pictures here it reminds me of you know the grand canyon when i went to vegas um so very nice uh website very good company uh and they have operations in michigan and minnesota and uh so they're you know big producer there and uh i would like to hear what you guys have to think about this chart because Jake had some thoughts, and so did you, Jim. So let's hear him. Yeah, well, he's he's got he's showing right here that history can repeat itself. We had a little pullback here to this trend line right here, and that trend line you could draw it straight across, and that's right in here. That and I think that's probably right around nine seventy eight, and it did have that pullback, and when it pulled back, it had the breakout. We did have lower highs though, so that that is a little deceiving right there. That could be, this, this flag right here could be an ascending triangle flag. It just could be. But it also could pre present uh, a breakout back up to that trend line and follow that trend line, and it keeps going lower, lower, and lower, lower. Then eventually we might have a breakdown on the stock where it'll pull back more. But that's what I'm seeing from this chart here. I am seeing like we hit a support level, and it could bounce up to hit this other trend line. Possibly break, but I'd... I'd don't quite see that happening I do see it bouncing back up and maybe getting a dead cat bounce on it and then I'm going to pull up one of my charts here and show you what I see on it this is what I see and that's not the right ticker so let me put this ticker in here <laughs> I did this once before and started talking about the wrong stock so this is what I see what I see is it did hit a support level here at 962 which he mentioned was that trend line and that trend line's a pivot point, pivot point on the yearly chart. You could see what I mean by pivot point because it pulled back, hit support, and bounced up. Pulled back, kind of hit that support, bounced up, pulled back, and it bound, pulled back and bounced up. But this here, we had that, and then we have what I call an ascending wedge going up. And we have had pretty good sell-off on this trade. It's just not happened overnight. So CLF... If we can hold this pivot point area at 962, 
we can bring it back up to a couple more resistances and that would be this $10 area and if the $10 come in your new buyers will start to step in and try to bring this up and and and, and run it up just a little bit so I'm gonna put a 1040 in here because I think if we do break that 10 we can go up to 1040 and maybe produce and get a little bit higher gonna have a strong resistance right here at 11 bucks though so this is going to be the breaking point come Monday. This is really going to decide where the um, rubber hits the road. And that's right here at 962. That's going to be your yearly pivot point, which is now a support. Once it breaks it, I would call once a support breaks a pivot point and breaks that pivot point to a resistance, it pulls back. That pivot point becomes a support to me. This is a pivot point on the year's chart. So let's look at the 20 day. Let's see what I'm talking about. A pretty good two-week pullback. We've had more than my five-day pullback, so this is starting. We started to retrace a little bit. The 20 is down on the bottom, the 50, so what they need to do is start reversing. You see where they were at one time the 20 days ago? We had the 200 down here, we had the 100, we had the 50, and we had the 20. Now you're seeing just the opposite. So if this 20 starts to curl up, you're going to start getting you know, above these other moving averages it becomes very bullish and when they started tightening up here was the time to escape the trade so this chart alone tells you a little bit about the SMAs when they start to tighten up you started seeing it was going to do something and you could tell it was going to do something by the lower highs it created and this right here is what you would call a descending flag and it did create a channel all the way down it didn't break that channel you see what I'm talking about? It, it didn't break that channel, but it also created a bottom right here, and that's at that pivot point area of 962 on the yearly chart. So if it breaks up, we got these other three resistances we got to hit, and hopefully we can get back up here to this highs again. And this is CLF. And the next one we're going to talk about is AQB. What an amazing run! Yeah, what an amazing run. And that one had some news. And, you know, this one reminds us of the stock from the OTC uh, platform from Shrimp. But this one's different. This is very similar. They're in the farming, fish farming as well, you know, and they got approval. Uh, they do fate, uh, farming, aqua advantage salmon in Indiana. And um, they got the FDA approval, uh, just so you know. The salmon was approved by the uh, agency over three years ago based on the review process. And they did confirm at the time that the salmon uh, was safe and nutritious and met all the requirements. And so, but they did have to wait to have the import alert lifted. And so now that everything checked off, um, they are going to immediately start the process to import what they call Aqua Advantage eggs. They have a hatchery in Canada, just so you know, the, and it um, to begin the grow at their Indiana facility. So I guess they're going to have these like salmon eggs and then they're going to start um, growing the salmon. So this is quite interesting. <clears throat> this reminds me of shrimp. It sure does. And my goodness, can you imagine the stock? I mean, this had a new 52-week high. And I just wonder, what is the potential with uh, this particular stock? Because... New 52-week high, great news, very same space as shrimp. Every, the demand for salmon is just crazy. They just can't even keep up with supply and demand. Um, so let's hear it for um, AQB and what can we see. I like the chart so far for continuation. And let's see what Jim thinks about that. So, Jim, over to you on that one. Can you guess how many tons of salmon is consumed in the United States just out of the Atlantic million. Ocean? Huh? 90 million. 350 million thousand tons. Well, there we go. Approximately. All right. 350,000 tons of Atlantic salmon are consumed in the United States. That's just out of the Atlantic Ocean. That's just the and, U.S. Yeah. And more of that's 90, and, and with more than 95% of it is imported. Wow. That's so, amazing. And I love salmon. That's my favorite fish. And I ate some just the other night. And so um, let's look at the salmon chart. I used to really, when I lived in Oregon, I used to really love to fish for salmon. I had this 
Chinook salmon, if anybody's familiar with it. But we had a, we watched a killer run on this stock Friday, and I scalped it for a little bit. I wish I'd have scalped it for a lot more. But this was just an amazing run, and I didn't really catch it until the end of the day when it started to pop, and that was here around the three buck area, 289. Even Vegas started getting her attention at that time. And this thing ran all the way, and it just kept going. It just didn't want to stop. And these red lines, believe it or not, are from two years ago that I've had trend, and they fell right into place. And I was kind of excited about that, too, because I was kind of boasting about that. So this is the three-year chart, and I was playing this stock when it had this last run right here back in the beginning year of 2017. She's pulled back since. And I do believe this stock has kind of like the same kind of uh, play that shrimp will have, SHMP, when it ran from, what was that, $0.02 cents all the way up to to 10 or 11 something like that, 11.5 No, that was the one that ran up a dollar. Excuse me. No, no. $0.02 cents long all long. the way up to a buck, $0.95 cents or something like that. So, yeah, I'm looking at this stock right now, and I was really excited about Friday, how it ran. And I'm going to go ahead and use the same trend lines that I had back in 2017. We had that low here of around 347. And I'm going to draw me a blue trend line right here, just in case she wants to pull back to that three buck area. And that's just a dollar pullback because this thing ran all the way up to 545. And then I see another trend line I'm going to put right in here. So all these blue ones are new ones. And all the red ones are the ones that I had back in 2017. If this thing decides to break out again Friday or Monday, I think we can run it back up here to the 477 area. And if that 477 holds, we might go into a double top, break that 434, and go off to the races with this one. But this is going to be a very exciting stock to watch Monday. Be sure to put it on your watch list and see how it reacts pre-market. I think if it does pull back, a little bit to pre-market we could hit this there's three different highs in here that I like but if it goes back to this 317 and really stops there and consolidates you're going to get you what I'd call a dead cat bounce and it can run back up into this channel area which is right here in here right around 385 to around 430 and if that 430 decides to break you got 448 and then she's going to go ahead and run up and hit this top area at 534. So th this is exactly how I kind of I see it coming. If it does pull back and does not go any lower than 317, you're going to get you a dead cat bounce on it. But if it does pull back and it consolidates at any of these trend lines, and feel free to stop this tape, draw these numbers down, copy and paste it, this chart, and use it as a reference for come Monday. And you could find yourself in this channel right in here where these red lines are if it doesn't pull that 317. But I'm definitely excited about this trade come Monday morning. I'm going to see what it's going to be doing. Because if it does anything like shrimp did, we could have us another uh, another BPTH here, but not as not as violent. But I bet you we could have us something that breaking this double top at 334. And that's AQB. And I think that about wraps it up for and vegas has a few more things you'd like to talk about in the yeah just briefly report. want to uh just uh want to say um happy women's day around the world and um it's international women's day and you know what it's international women's year every day is women's day yep. <laughs> and uh you know i seriously mean that um and uh you know we want to give back to the uh women in the financial literacy sector and if you're a woman and you want to learn about stocks or you want to just you know just get familiar with the, you know the market you're welcome to come join our room we'll let you come in there for a month for free you can pick any month that you want it doesn't have to be the month of march it could be any month throughout the year just message me vegas at i love stocks.com and i'll be happy to connect with you and set you up and you can just come and learn and uh, we just want to give back um, for people to uh, learn more about the markets. So please feel free. Don't be shy. There's no um, expectations. You know, after the month, 
if you if it's not for you or you don't want to continue that's okay you know it's the whole point is for you to be self-sufficient anyways um so if hopefully you'll learn some new things and then you can just trade on your own and we'll be very happy to hear that and uh be you know make you more successful uh than what you are maybe today so on that note i also want to mention that maybe next year there might be a future conference for women traders and uh, might be something that will be hosted in Las Vegas. I will be interacting with other women traders that I know that are looking and considering to do something like this. I think this will be great for the industry and I fully support it. And I hope uh, any woman out there that's interested in joining or hearing more about that, um, stay tuned as I get more details as it gets developed for maybe 2020. Um, I'll be happy to share. So I wish everyone a fabulous Monday. I hope the week will be much better than what it was. Uh, it's been, a, I would say for me personally, it's been a tough week with trading, not trading as much. Uh, even my options, not really trading that many options, traded some puts, but not nothing really big. Uh, just because I'd rather just wait and not use my cash until I see an improvement in the direction of the market. Um, it's very easily to get fooled. One minute it's recovering, one minute there's a pullback. Um, so you know what? I don't want to take those kind of risks. I'd rather just wait. And so right now I'm just kind of cooling it off on the option side and we'll see what happens next week, every week, every day. So I'm ready and prepared and you should be too. So have a great evening, great day. Enjoy the Sunday and see you on Monday. Jim. Yeah. And I want to close it with saying when the market is red, I try to stay green. This is the aftermarket report. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. And today's date is March 10th, 2019. And we love stocks.